Hey friends, it's Melanie. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today I've got a great what's for dinner copycat edition for you. I'm going to be preparing three of my family's favorite meals from different restaurants that we've eaten at. Today is very special for me because this is my first collaboration with another YouTuber. Sweet Bethany from Budget Bethany is collaborating with me today on this week's What's for Dinner. I will leave her video and channel down in my description box. Be sure and check her out and let her know that I sent you. Bethany has the best southern dishes and she is just a sweetheart. So let's get right into today's meals. The first thing I'm making is Chili's Monterey Chicken. This is not on their menu anymore and I don't know why they ever took this off. This is a super easy recipe, minimal ingredients. Bacon, barbecue sauce, green onions, tomatoes, cheese, and of course the chicken. So the first thing you're gonna do is get your bacon all ready to go. Then you're gonna fry up your chicken breast in a skillet. You wanna make sure that's an oven safe skillet so you don't have to put it into another uh, casserole dish or something to go into the oven. While your chicken's frying up, you're just gonna cut your bacon and your green onions up into little pieces. Once you get your chicken cooked through on both sides, you're just gonna slather it all real good with some barbecue sauce. This was my favorite dish at Chili's. I got this every time that we went. And this is a dish that's very easy to create at home. I have a link for the specific ingredients and steps, and I'll leave it down in my description box as well. But pretty much, once you get it slathered in barbecue sauce, you're just gonna add you some cheese. Of course, I've got Monterey Jack because it's called Monterey Chicken. But I'm also gonna add a little shredded cheddar and then you're going to put it down in your oven for about five or so minutes just watch it real close you're basically just waiting for your cheese to get all melted on there and you use whatever cheese you have on hand this is something that you would probably have ingredients for any night of the week. And it's a quick dish, and it's something different to do with chicken, a different flavor than, you know, chicken casserole or baked chicken or fried chicken. So you see mine coming out now, and it's got all that melted cheese on it, and you're just gonna take a piece out and start plating it up. I put crumbled bacon, the green onions, tomatoes on mine, the only thing I might do different next time is leave my bacon in bigger pieces and put it under the cheese and actually let it cook in the oven a little bit with it. I believe that's how I remember Chili's doing theirs. It was bigger pieces of bacon and it was under the cheese. But this is such a good dish. I served it up just like I ordered it in the restaurant. Some good old steamed broccoli and I had some instant Idahoan loaded baked potatoes. This chicken, it's bursting full of flavor. You got the barbecue sauce and all the cheeses and the bacon and then the nice little green onion and tomato on there. Your family will love this and if you've never had it from Chili's, I know you'll love it and want to put it in your weekly rotation. Next step, I've got something you might have seen before, but it's good old Taco Bell Crunch Wrap Supremes. I've never had one in a Taco Bell, I have to be honest, but I love these things. All you need are some big burrito-sized flour tortillas, you need some the small crunchy tostada shells, and your regular taco fixings, sour cream, taco sauce, nacho cheese, shredded cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, and then of course you're gonna prepare your taco meat just like you would if you were making regular tacos. When I make this, I put a lot of stuff inside of mine. So I don't use a whole lot of meat in it. We just, I've just prepared like a pound of hamburger meat here into taco meat, and we'll always have some left over. So sometimes we have tacos later on again. Sometimes we'll make nachos out of it, add some refried beans and stuff. 
But I'll be honest with you, if I have the big burrito shells and tostadas, we just about always have this two nights in a row. We love these things. And I'm just showing you here that I like to shred my lettuce up just as thin as I can get it. That iceberg lettuce gives it a nice crunch. And evidently, this is how Taco Bell's is made. So once you've got everything prepped there, you're ready to assemble. You're going to take your large flour tortilla and just spread you a little bit of that nacho cheese sauce on there. You just want to make it about the size of your um, tostada. On top of that, you're going to put you some taco meat. Again, you're just, you know, not filling up the whole flour burrito. And then you're going to put your crunchy tostada. And these that come in this box, they are nice and flat. It doesn't matter if they break up a little bit. They're going to break when you eat it. But these right here, they're just real good about holding together while you're making it. And I spread a little bit of sour cream on mine. And then some taco sauce. And then you just start building it with all your fixings. Uh, lettuce, tomato, onions. I didn't have any onions in here this night, but sometimes I'll just put salsa on mine and get the onions and tomato in one. And then, of course, you're going to want some more shredded cheese. And like I said, I put a lot of stuff in mine. So I've not found a burrito wrap that's big enough to hold everything. <laughs> I always have just a little bit of opening in mine and I've seen some other folks make these and they'll use a whole nother maybe small flour tortilla but I just think that's too much breading on this so I'll show you a little trick I use when I start folding it up you'll see there's just gonna be just a small little brown piece in the middle that's not gonna get covered so I just take another one of these tortillas and I just tear me off a piece and stick it in the middle then I start folding up on each side and all around it and then you've got the middle covered so your cheese and all your goodness can't escape and in your skillet you just heat you some butter up get it nice and warm and then you're gonna put that the seam side down first into that butter and you're just gonna fry this up till it is pretty and brown and not really crunchy, but it's just got a good flavor and a little bit of um, thickness to it there. Oh, look how pretty that is. And you see it's held together right there onto that little extra piece that I put in there. So let me cut this baby up for you and show it to you. There's just something about this. I don't know what it is, the crunch and the fresh ingredients inside and then you got the soft shell on the outside it's got you know some butter flavor grilled on it it's just yummy if you've not tried this at home please do it you will not be sorry you'll thank me for it Then we always got to have some good old queso chips and salsa with it. I've got so many taco items that I've got a whole little drawer in my refrigerator, a little container I just use for that. Now here's you a nice little Cinco de Mayo sweet treat. These are little copycat churros. These are the easiest things to make. All you're going to need is some puff pastry cinnamon and sugar and then some vegetable oil to fry these things up in. I got this uh, this idea from a little recipe booklet that Kroger's mails out every so often and this one was for Cinco de Mayo and it had these paired with this yummy dark chocolate fudge topping. So I thought we probably needed to try this out. Again, I'll, I don't have a link for this recipe but I'll type out the ingredients and everything for you down in my description box. Just gonna mix your cinnamon and your sugar together. You're gonna fry these up in vegetable oil at 400 degrees, and it's not gonna take but just a minute or so on each side. 
These are great if you are lactose intolerant. I know we have some in our family and it is hard to find a good dessert for them to eat and this fits the bill perfectly. Now it says to put your little flour down so your dough doesn't stick but it had been years since I used puff pastry for anything and it's already floured. You don't even have to do that. It was not going to stick at all but I'm just laying mine out here and I'm just going to take my knife and kind of score it how far apart I think I want my little strips to be. So I probably did mine about an inch apart. Then I'll cut the whole little line down there and then I'm going to go back and cut them in half because I'm not frying in a huge, you know, pan here. I just want to work with about half size of these strips, maybe four or five at a time at the most. As per my usual self, I got kind of excited, couldn't wait for my oil, so I jacked my temperature up a little bit. It's supposed to be 400 degrees and it just wasn't getting there quick enough for me. So by the time it hit 400, it just kept on going. So mine fried up really fast. You gotta really watch them. You'll see how quickly they puff up. You just gotta, you know, keep turning them and getting both sides of them brown. And they honestly, they don't take but just a minute or two on each side. By the time I got to my last batch, and I did fry up both sheets of that puff pastry, I sent a huge bag of these to my parents. Um, but by the time that I got to my last batch, my oil had got back down to 400, so I really had to watch them, and it did not take long at all for them to cook up. And then the recipe, of course, it says just to lightly toss them in your cinnamon and your sugar, but I thought, well, you know, go big or go home. I coated these things, baby. There was cinnamon and sugar all over my mouth whenever I was eating these. But they were so good. It was sort of a, you know, not necessarily a copycat of the cinnamon twist at Taco Bell, but this tastes more like a, a donut stick, real light, sugary donut stick. These were just so good. And I just never tend to be amazed at myself when I make something and it turns out good. I'll give you a little bit of um, behind the scenes here of how things are when I'm cooking. Oh my god, it's delicious. So I'll just let you enjoy this beautiful footage of these churros cooking up. They sure were good. We did heat up some of that dark chocolate sauce and we tried it. It was good. It was very, very good. But I'll be honest with you, I just liked them by themselves. Um, you know, chocolate sauce or no chocolate sauce. I loved them just like they were. But I love anything that's cinnamony. And the last dish I have for you is really not a recipe at all. These are good old copycat at home Big Macs. And the only thing that you really need to make this a Big Mac, they're secret sauce from Walmart. I did have some dehydrated onions and I put a little bit of water with them and let them sit a few minutes and then I drained that water off and it just makes them just like the McDonald's onions. But this secret sauce really does taste like a Big Mac. The hardest part of this is getting your patties thin. I just couldn't get mine thin enough. When I make these again, I'm just gonna have me a one patty Big Mac because I could not hardly fit my mouth around this. But you're gonna get your meat all fried up and then you're gonna use two bottoms of hamburger buns and one top bun to build your Big Mac. You're gonna take your secret sauce and squirt a good amount on both of the bottoms of the buns and then you're just gonna start building that Big Mac. I didn't use pickles because I don't really like pickles on my hamburger but I put some of those little onions, some lettuce, and then my burger. Now I just put one piece of cheese on mine. 
by the time I got to that point, I just felt like this was going to be overkill. This was a lot on this burger. So, I just used one piece of cheese on mine. But again, I'll show you a little behind the scenes here. I had my daughter helping me. I said, honey, you've got to come here and let's uh, see what this looks like when I bite into it. Let me take a bite of it and I'll show them the inside. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I can get my mouth around it. You might have to scoop back for me do this. Mm, that's good. Again, guys, I can't thank you enough for watching. If you've come over and watched this video from Bethany's channel, I just thank you so much. And I hope you've enjoyed these meals. I hope that they've inspired you to create something yummy and delicious at your own home. And to everybody that is a regular subscriber to my channel, I thank you so much for watching. Be sure and get down in my description box and you guys go over and check out Budget Bethany. She is the sweetest Georgia peach. I appreciate her so much for collaborating on this What's For Dinner with a brand new YouTuber. That girl can cook, and she has the best southern dishes. You all will love Bethany, and you will love her food. Get down in her comments. Tell her that Mama Mel sent you. If you're here from her channel, again, I appreciate it so much. Introduce yourself in the comments so I can get to know you. See you in my next video. Until then, have a great day.